sometimes I'll put things in my videos as an experiment or research for a future video, and the useless machine video was one such occasion. In there, I deliberately flashed on screen my new wristwatch for a total of just three seconds to see if the people that noticed it reacted in the way that I'd hoped. And I'm glad to say that they did. Let me explain. Now, I'm not a watch geek, and I mean geek in the affectionate way there. There's people that can recognise any watch at 100 feet. I'm not that kind of person. I don't go to the watch websites, the watch forums, or read watch magazines. However, I do know what I like in a watch, and I realise I don't have a good-looking watch myself. I recently had to dress up for an event and didn't have a watch that was suitable to wear with the outfit. So, decided, top of my shopping list, get a new watch that looks good. It also has to be analogue. I want one with a nice clear display. It's got to have a day and date calendar. That's important to me. I don't want it to have a battery. I want some sort of automatic mechanism. And I want a watch that won't look out of place, whether it's worn with a dinner suit or with a t-shirt. Now, it just so happened that about this time, I ended up reading an article in Wired about the Seiko 5. Now, I know watch geeks will freak out that I don't know about the Seiko 5, but honestly, I didn't until I read that article. I then went on the Seiko website, read up about it, realised it's been around for over 50 years, and I'm just catching up now, and I thought, that's the kind of watch I'd like. So I went ahead and bought one, and here it is. Now, the guys that know their watches inside out spotted this model straight away. Jason correctly identifies it as a Seiko 5. And ACFM HD goes a step further and gets the exact model, which is the SNZF17, a.k.a. the Sea Urchin. But to your average guy in the streets, it looks an awful lot like the Rolex Submariner. Now, that's a very expensive watch, much more than I could ever afford. And it's perhaps most famous for being worn by Sean Connery when he was James Bond. You might have had a spot it in Goldfinger. Now, more recent Bonds moved over to the Omega Seamaster, which looks an awful lot like it as well. And Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig wear watches like that. Now, back to the one I've got, which looks a lot like all of those watches, but costs a heck of a lot less. You can pick this one up for perhaps 120 to 130 UK pounds, maybe 130 to 150 US dollars. Now that might make you think this is a cheap watch. Well, it's value for money because this watch could quite easily pass for something that costs four times as much. It's a really well put together piece of equipment. Very attractive and it's got this mechanism that they've been using for over 50 years. It's obviously got a good reputation because you saw those guys earlier on. They knew how much it cost and what it was and even they said, hey, nice watch. So it's a pretty good watch for £120. Now, one thing I was a little bit concerned about, the day was showing in German on mine and when I started setting it, noticed it moved between German and English. Um, if you set it in whichever one you want, it will stay there. Now, obviously, I imported this from Spain, strangely enough, but it's got German and English on it. But uh, maybe you'll get different versions in your own country. One thing I do notice, look how the date just clicks into the window there, just drops down with a nice little click. Everything's got the beautiful um, controls on it. Just feel this watch. It just feels right. Twisting this thing around makes you feel like you're cracking into a safe. You get 120 clicks for a, a whole um, rotation of that. Beautiful. The second hand's got this really smooth movement. And as you can see that dot on the back of it, that's painted with Illuminous paint and so are all the other important parts on the watch so you can see it at night as well. Now on the back of the watch there's a window which lets you see the mechanism because it's an automatic watch this one. That little weight moves around during the course of the day winding up the mechanism. You've got no need to get inside there and mess around but at least you can see in there and you can see the mechanism working away. It's a really nice little touch that you don't tend to get on a lot of watches. Now the strap too big for me i've got tiny little thin wrists i had to take two uh, links out of each side all you do is you push the little pins through with one of these watch tools everyone should have one of these if they ever buy more than one watch it saves a heck of a lot of money getting your strap adjusted and once i adjusted it fitted beautifully it's a really comfortable watch to wear i quite often forget that i've got it on it just doesn't feel like it's there sometimes now whilst this isn't a smart watch it's definitely a smart watch and it's probably the nicest watch I've ever bought and the best value for money. And the reason I say that is because people that know what it is appreciate the fact that you've bought a Seiko 5, which is a great watch. And people that don't know what it is think you've bought a Rolex. 
so you can't get better value for money than that. If you want to get hold of one of them, there's a link in the video description. But for the moment, as always, thanks for watching.